Well, the first time I was just walking into the airstrip, there was this kind of a curiosity which comes on everyone's face. Oh, uh, now after all the uh, male flight coordinators which they have seen, maybe big burly men, they're seeing this thin, tall, lean Indian woman marching on and trying to tell them what to do and, you know, uh, try to determine their manifest. So uh, I could really vividly remember a kind of a curiosity and some little giggles everywhere. coming from a family which did not have a lot of links with armed forces or services or uniform per se. When I was finishing graduation and uh, I was being campus recruited to different firms, and I kind of started having this feeling that, okay, I need to do a little more for the country, you know, and the charm of the uniform was hitting me very badly. Even though my father was like, okay, go, do it. Like, I know you're capable and you can do it. But I was pretty bright academically. So then, why do you not get campus selected? Just after your engineering was the big question. And my mother was not happy uh, in joining the army. She was like, mm, I remember she went on a hunger strike. But I could also see them very proud, you know, when I passed out after the training. So yes, I got commissioned into the army in 2002 into the Corps of Signals as a lieutenant. This experimentation phase was in senior level management and leadership. How far can you develop women? Where all can you deploy women? When you command troops in the front line, organization had to carefully think, uh, you know, uh, does the acceptance level change or not? Uh, one major change which I saw was the army slowly opening up to senior leadership positions being given to women or women being considered for this, which actually comes with its own supporting uh, kind of uh, management. Uh, for example, facilitating senior trainings which were till then not open to women. So the selection process begins, so you're obviously competing for it or you're, you're kind of developing yourself for it. Your tenures are supported in a certain way that you uh, are open to these courses, you pass out in flying colours and you're considered for senior positions. Uh, that is one part and the other part is uh, locations and postings, you know, some of the uh, areas where we thought that women should not be deployed for a certain reason, no women can be deployed and the organization is now in a position to support be it a man or a woman to function in that area. Uh, one big challenge I faced uh, in the army was again waiting for the Supreme Court to finally give a decision but I thought I can't wait beyond this and I moved on to another profession which is again successful for me but then again I did not pursue my career so that's a compromise I made knowingly. My first mission for uh, MSF was uh, in Congo, in uh, again back to DRC but in another location called Kimbi. I was the, uh, one of the I think first uh, women flight coordinators in the MSF pool. I still remember the first day when I just walked into the airstrip. Uh, we had these uh, the pilots who have been there forever and in the whole uh, airstrip there was only me uh, who was a female. So they were like okay what is she going? going to do so can she do that job I mean uh, however sometimes uh, I do feel that's not just flight coordinator you you do have to prove yourself twice occasionally when I 
was lucky enough to be posted in a place where there was a, a senior uh, lady officer who was about to finish her 10th year. She was from the intelligence corps. So it was very helpful. And uh, just catching up in the evenings and even otherwise. Knowing the practical tips, of, uh, tips from a woman officer, that really helped me. And I would say, when you know that the organization is kind of still transitioning into how to, you know, uh, pull you up to that pedestal where everybody else is functioning, to see women who are successful already, who have, who have done their 10 years, you know, who have done meritorious service, that's really motivating, I would say. And of course, when you're uh, really alone in the field where there are uh, like more than 100, 200 men around you, the sight of a woman is really nice. Eh? levels of people sometimes vary sometimes you're greeted wholeheartedly as a woman sometimes you know there's a step back when you have to prove yourself once twice thrice uh, every generation has to sacrifice something to push us to the next level where women are in any profession society conditions you in a certain way your own family conditions you in a certain way what you need to do what you don't have to do there is an expiry date people put to your dreams Family support is really required. Uh, so for me as well, there were, for example, trips which I could not have undertaken if I did not have someone, uh, you know, at home to look after my family. The last week was a cultural fest in my daughter's school where uh, I was busy doing something in Sri Lanka, but taken an overnight flight uh, and come back here to attend it. I did not see her practice or I did not know if the costume fits her, but then she was on stage and I was there. let anybody else tell you what you need to dream or what you need to do because just by virtue of being born as a woman you are empowered you don't you're born in the society where you're battling every single day yeah? in different shapes forms sizes intensity so you are empowered so go on don't let anyone condition you you identify what you want to do in life and just be strong and things are changing do not let uh, sacrifices of generations go waste